Hi, everyone. In this video, I'm going to provide you with an overview of accounting for dividends. So what you'll see when you get into dividend accounting is depending on whether it's a cash dividend, a stock dividend, common stock, preferred stock, whether that preferred stock is cumulative, non-cumulative, there's a lot of factors that go into calculating dividends. But nonetheless, they all follow a generally similar accounting pattern. And so that's what I'm going to kind of talk about in this video is the, the broad overview that kind of applies to all. So here we go. First, just a, a, a brief kind of introduction into dividends before we talk about the actual accounting. Dividends are specifically distributions to stockholders. So when you give the stockholders something back, that is known as a dividend. Um, typically, your dividend is based on the percentage of your ownership. So like if you're common stock and you own 5% of the company's common stock and the company declares a dividend, you will be entitled to 5% of that dividend. So it could be based on your percentage of ownership. When your preferred stock, though, it's usually some sort of guaranteed amount. So your preferred stock might actually say 1%, half a percent, quarter of a percent, whatever it is, right? And so that's your dividend. It's not share of ownership. It's you get a return per share of stock based on a predetermined um, um, amount. Note that distributions of dividends may be many things. The most likely one is cash. That is absolutely the most common dividend you see, a cash dividend. However, second to that is you might actually see companies do what's known as a stock dividend, where they issue more stock rather than cash. In really strange situations, you might even see companies hand out PP&E in lieu of stock or cash or really any other asset. Because remember, a dividend is a return of value to the shareholder. All of your assets have value. And so you could see some wild and rare situations where something other than cash or stock is given to the investors. But by and large, these are the most popular, with cash being the most popular. As you see down here, dividends are typically expressed in dollars per share, number of shares, percent of par value, or percent of shares outstanding. This all just kind of hinges on what type of dividend is being given, right? So for instance, if you're giving a cash dividend, you might express it as you are earning $1 per share, right, in dividends. Um, if, say, it's one of these guaranteed amounts from preferred stock, it could be a situation of saying, oh, you are getting a 1% return on the par value of your preferred stock, right? Those are cash situations. Or if it's, say, a stock situation, it may just be, well, everyone gets 100 number of, you know, 100 shares or something of that nature. Or it could be you are going to get a dividend of 10% of the shares outstanding. Something of that nature is what the company would declare and then divvy that pool up among, among the various stockholders. So, so this is typically how you'll see it. But again, since cash is the most common, and of course, since common stockholders are, are kind of the most common stockholders, typically you'll see the dollars per share wording um, as part of the cash dividend. All right, here is the key to accounting for dividends. Now that you have that background, let's, let's kind of talk about the nuances. Dividends have three key dates that are associated with them. I call this the three Ds. It's known as the declaration date, the date of record, and the distribution date. The declaration date is the date that the company comes out and says, we are going to pay a dividend. All right, They announce it. They don't actually pay it that day. They just announce that they plan to give a dividend. On that day, because the company has publicly announced it, they are now liable to pay that dividend off. And so as a result, they are going to record a liability or if it's not a cash dividend, say it's a stock dividend, an equivalent to a liability, which I'm going to call an equity obligation that essentially says we owe you this. So they might literally create dividend payable in their liability section saying we owe this much in cash. Or if it's stock, they'll create something called like stock dividend distributable Sounds just like payable, right? Except that's going to go in the equity section because it represents a, a future increase in, in stock issuance, essentially. Either way, it's creating an obligation for them to pay something off. Now, where do dividends come from? Well, if you know anything about retained earnings, you know that typically retained earnings looks like this. You have a starting amount of retained earnings from prior periods, 
whatever net income you have for the current period gets added to your retained earnings, assuming you're keeping those earnings within the company. Whatever you're giving back to investors in the form of a dividend gets subtracted from retained earnings. And that, of course, equals then your ending retained earnings. So where do dividends come from? Well, they come from your retained earnings. So on the day that you create that obligation, which is going to be a credit, right? Whether it's the liability or the equity, you're going to create a credit. You are going to also debit your retained earnings to reduce the retained earnings for the amount of the dividend, okay? Now, that's all on the declaration date. Next up, you have the date of record. The date of record is not an accounting date. The date of record is the date on which an investor must hold the stock in order to get the dividend. Now, that's still not the day they get the dividend. It's just saying that usually that declaration says something like, we will pay this amount of dividend on this date to stockholders of record as of this date. So that last one I said, stockholders of record as of this date, that's the date of record. So if you own it that day, you're on the list to get the dividend. If you don't own it that day, you're not on the list to get the dividend. But again, this is not an accounting issue. This is just a logistical issue. So there is no journal entry that day. That brings us to the distribution date. This is when the company actually pays out the dividend to the investor. So you remember that liability or that equity obligation that we created on the declaration date? Well, this is the day you pay it off. So whereas you would have credited those back at declaration, now you debit those to pay them off, just like you would pay off any other liability, and then you are either going to um, uh, credit cash or credit stock if you are paying it out in cash or if you're paying it out by issuing more stock, right? So there's your three Ds, only two matter for accounting purposes, and it is it really is kind of simple, right? Reduce retained earnings, create an obligation, reduce the obligation, pay out in whatever form you're paying out. All right, that's it for your general overview. As I mentioned, depending on the very specific circumstances of any one dividend, there are going to be some additional nuances, but this is the general rule of thumb that applies to all of them. Um, hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.